Hey guys, I'm Gamer Mate. Welcome back to a new video. So I'm here back inside Roblox Studio on my camping game. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to carry on your story. So in the last episode, I showed you how to make a talking NPC. And also I made it so these borders disappear after a certain amount of time, after the dialogue was stopped. And now in today's video, um, also before the recording, I built this quick cabin, which is going to be part of my story. Also, thanks for 3,000 subscribers on my channel. Also, before recording, I'm just going to say that I've changed some of the scripts. So, if we head into Start Player, click the arrow, then Start Character Scripts, open that up. It should be a local script. Name it to Create Dialogue Script inside of it. Write out this um, code here. But um, also ignore this line. Uh, just add it in anyway, but we'll be doing that later. But um, yeah, just make sure you write out this script here. So, we close it off. And then the next script and uh, stuff what I added in was a remote event called create dialogue event this time because I replicated storage so make sure you have that and then the last thing what I did was I actually um, disabled the original talking script so I just disabled it so it don't actually run any like code in the game anyway carry on so the last thing I did was inside of script service I did in a game script and then you can see this entire uh, code here I'll zoom in so you can actually see what it does. So in here, this is the local create dialogue event, which is the um, remote event in replicated storage. And then this function here, which is get play image, gets um, the image of a player's head, so when we talk. And then get random player gets one of the players to talk out of um, all the players in the game. And then this um, function here gets the noob's image. And then again, this is the um, random player and the get player image and then we have a local function challenge intro which waits 8 seconds before he starts talking I also just change the text to waiting for place to load so then one of the players says uh, where am I after 6 seconds then it gets the noob to talk saying guys over here and then it keeps carrying on so again one of the players the noob the player the player the, player, the uh, noob so you can see it just carries on then after he does all that then I've just added in this line, I don't know if that actually works right now, we'll have to see. But then down here we have more function challenges. And underneath that then we have this start game, which will um, like trigger each challenge in a row. So first it's the intro, which is the one I just showed you. Then number one, number two, number three, number four, and then an ending. Uh, so yeah, thanks to Poncho King Toy Scripts. Anyway, carrying on. So first before we actually do anything else, I'm just going to be showing you um, how to make like a beginning because in my story there is a car crash then I'm going to have a black screen with like a um, car crash sound and then it'll slowly fade out or it'll like tween up or something and then the dialogue will play so let's add in a screen GUI and then let's name this to a car crash or we can name it to like car crash intro in case you have anything else to do with the car crash but inside of it let's add in a frame and then let's make the color to like a dark gray or like a black and then let's change the size to one comma zero comma one comma zero so then once you do that you should see it fills the entire screen and then let's change the uh, z index to like about um five let's change it to five so it covers everything and then inside of it we can add in a uh, script so then the script will play the sound and then it also do like the animation so let's actually find the car crash sound okay so I might just use this one and then if we name it to uh, car crash sound so you can hear it so then if we um, go back inside the script and then if we do local frame equals script.parent and then we do frame dot transparency uh, dot background transparency sorry equals to so right now it's um, zero so equals to 0 0.1 so we could wait uh, 0 0.05 seconds and then we could just copy paste this line and then keep doing it over and over and over until it reaches like um, one 
So then once it reaches 10, then just change it to 1 instead of um, doing 0 0.10 like or something. And then that should work, so this should fade out. So then if we do wait like um, 5 seconds before it actually does it, then play. See if it looks actually like a good animation. So after 5 seconds, you can see it fades out slowly. And then it says waiting for place to load. And then after a few seconds you should start talking. Let's make it so it's a bit longer. So let's try like um, 8 seconds. Okay so I'm actually just going to delete this um, sand second. Instead of actually deleting it we can drag it into our workspace. Make a new folder. Oh no uh, we don't actually need to make a new folder. Uh, if you already have a sound script then drag it in. And then drag it into sound effects. And that should work. So maybe if we do a local script inside of our frame and do game dot workspace dot sound dot sound effects dot car crash sound and then play. So colon play and then two brackets. But instead of doing that we could actually wait and then we can wait maybe like five seconds, not five drive five, and see if that uh, works. And then before we actually test out, let's name this local script to play sound. And then we can name the normal script to fade frame. Now let's play it. Uh, before we actually uh, see, let's see if my game volume is on. Okay, it should be. Oh, there we go. So um, let's actually make the sound go down a bit. So let's make the time into these three. Test that now. You can hear the sound play. And then it should fade out. And the novel plays um, start in. So to make it better, let's actually find like an explosion sound. Okay, let's uh, use this one. And then we can drag it inside sounds, sound effects, like that. Then back inside our script, we can do underneath this, we can do wait, and then let's wait about uh, three seconds. We can do game dot workspace dot sound dot sound effects dot explosion and then play and see if that sounds good. So we test it out now. Okay, so that'll do. So that's, a, that's an okay um, timing. But if you want, you can make it however long you want until the sounds play. Or you can even do like a different intro. But now let's just make this frame invisible. So if you click it, go down in properties, and then click visible. So then we, ha so then we can actually see our game. So now that that works, we can quickly make the rest of the game. Because it's been recovered for like 20 minutes already. A player should find the cabin. So then once we play finds cabin, so then now we need to make it so a GY appears for every um for everyone in the game. So if we just make this frame invisible, then add in a new screen GY, name it to find trigger GY. On the side of it we can add in a frame once again. Then the frame size can be 1, comma 0, comma 0 0.2, comma 0. And then you can see it's more like a smaller kind of frame size. So then now inside of the frame we can add in a text label and then the text label size can be 1, 0, 1, 0 so it fills the entire frame size and then on both of these we can make the background transparency to 1 on both the frame and the text label and then let's name the text label to found text oops uh, spelt found wrong well with capital O okay so now if we customise this a second, we can change the font and colour. So then now this GUI should appear for everyone who, uh, to whoever finds the um, cabin. So then now we need to place a trigger around the um, building. So if we place around a brick, we can rotate it. And then we can fill it so it fills the entire cabin. There we go. 
So then now if we make it invisible, and then cast shadows is off. And then the last thing we need to do is make sure anchors is on and also make sure can collide is off. Then let's name this to um, cabin trigger. Oops, but cabin wrong. And then we can make a new folder inside workspace. And then we can name this to uh, triggers. Drag this part inside. And then we can add in a um, local script inside the frame. And then inside of this we could do local cabin uh, trigger. Equals the game dot workspace dot triggers and then cabin trigger. So then up on this list then we can have all the triggers inside our game. So right now we only have one. So let's go down to line three. And then we can write out local function on touched then brackets hit. Then underneath this end we can go down twice. So then now we can do cabin trigger dot touched connect and then served in function we can do on touched and then remove both of these brackets and then this should be the function and back on line uh, four we could do script dot parent dot visible equals to true then wait um, eight seconds and after eight seconds we can copy this line, paste it in and change this to false. So right now this will just uh, make it so it appears. So let's make this frame uh, invisible. So click it, go down properties and click visible off. Then let's actually just click here so we can actually um, test it first. So if you walk over, then you can see the text label appears. So then after 8 seconds, you can see it disappears. So right now that works, we need to go back inside the script. And then let's actually name this local script to um, trigger text. And then we can do underneath script.parent.visible equals true. We can do script.parent. Actually instead of um, doing script.parent. We can make a new local above this cabin trigger. We can do local found text equals to script dot parent dot found text. So then now we can do found text dot text equals to hit dot parent dot name and then dot dot and speech marks. And then we could do space has found shelter and then let's see if this actually um, changes the text so if we walk over you can see it says ruby 4 has found shelter aka my uh, username so whoever find, finds it should have their name displayed saying it has found the shelter and then after that we need to make it so all the players actually teleport to this one point so back inside our workspace we can add in a folder, name this to teleport points, and then we can add in a part, and then place it about here, then lift it up a few studs in the air so all the place don't actually like glitch through the floor, so about this height should do. And then let's name this to cabin teleport one. Drag this inside the teleports and then make sure can close it off. Let's actually make it a bright colour so we can see it while we're um, editing it. So the last thing we need to do is make it so we all teleport here. Okay, so if we go inside the server script service, add in a script. And then name the script to teleport players. And then we could do local um, cabin teleport position equals to actually let's add in a one 
and then equals to, and then get the position of this. Yours will be different to mine. And then make sure that they're in between speech marks. Then if we go down and do function on touched and brackets hit. We could do local players equals the game dot players and then get children. We could do for i equals to one comma hashtag players and then do players square bracket i dot character and then colon move to so it's like that then brackets vector three dot new and then uh, cabin teleport position one then make sure we have two brackets then underneath this we can do Actually, instead of doing on touch, we can do cabin, teleport, touched. Then we can do game dot workspace dot triggers, and then dot cabin trigger dot touched connect. Then we can do cabin teleport touched. So then this will be the function. We can do um, get rid of that. Then solving brackets, we could do game dot workspace dot uh, teleport points dot cabin teleport dot position. So then we should be able to teleport there. Okay, so if we walk over, then um, it teleports me to a random position. But it does work, so that's fine. We need to see why though. Uh, so um, yeah, I'll just be trying to figure this out. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. Also, make sure to check out my Roblox group and Discord server, also in the description. Also, thanks for 3,000 subscribers. Also, thanks for um, 600 members in my Discord group. And I'll see you later. Bye!